Should I get a bike fit? It's a question we are often asked here at GCN Tech, and more often than not, the answer is, well, it kind of depends. So I've come to London to the Pinarello store to see an expert bike fitter so they can assess the position that I'm riding in because, well, it's been over five years since I last had a bike fit and following on from that, well, I've retired from professional racing, my body has changed a lot and I've changed bikes far too many times to keep count. So I'm gonna find out if my position is any good and also show you the process of what's involved so that you can decide if a bike fit could be beneficial for you. Helping me out today is a good friend of mine, Jake from Precise Performers, who regular viewers will have seen in previous videos. So let's sit down and get chatting. Right, Jake, uh, I have had this bike for a couple of months now, yep. and I've been itching to get a bike fit on it and see what you think yep. of my sort of initial setup on the position. Mm -hmm. And it's taken us a little while to get our calendars yeah. aligned, doesn't it? It's been a bit busy. But here we are, we've made it. So what I want to do really today is like run through the process of what's involved with a bike fit, discuss yep. the elements and aspects that are able to be adjusted. Yep. And then we can also see what you think of my initial guesswork of setting this bike up and discuss what the sort of benefits of having a bike fit are so that yep. everyone at home can decide whether it's something they want to do or not. Yeah, so absolutely. So where on earth should we start with this? Um, first things first, let's get you into some kit. So the first step is to assess me yeah and then see what we can then do translating across to the bike exactly that yeah like right. i said earlier we want we want the the bike to fit to you not you fit to the bike yeah. because you're not going to be efficient you're not going to be effective when you're riding and you increase your risk of injury so no one wants that it's a hobby we don't want that, yeah. most people <clears> 99.9 percent of people it's a hobby yeah so we want people to actually understand you know to enjoy it and not yeah, Not if you spend all this money on a new bike, you want to be able to ride it, don't yeah, you? 100%, yeah, 100%. So where do we start in terms of doing that assessment? So, um, so assume you've done all the goals and we know what we're kind of looking for. Yeah. I kind of know a bit of background about yourself and what you're trying to ride and what you're trying to do. Um, the next thing would be to jump into a physical assessment. Uh -huh. okay? So what I'm looking for is um, imbalances. Okay? Yeah. Every, everyone has imbalances, so it's not like a right or wrong, but just so we can address these on the bike. Yeah. Uh, limitations within mobility and flexibility, or maybe not limitations, who yeah. knows. Uh, and also some strengthened areas which also need some support. Okay. okay. So uh, the first thing what we do is to jump in just to uh, like a full standing assessment from sort of anterior and posterior view. Yeah. Um, to then understand what's going on. Then we'll get the assessment table out, look at some uh, range of movement. Uh, the imbalance in that range of movement, and then we can then jump onto the bike and sort your cleats and. and so there's the a fair little out. bit of stuff to do before we even actually involve the bike. Yeah, I mean it's kind of a bit like a human fit, really, not, yeah. not a bike fit in, in a way, because we are purely looking. I'm not even really interested in the bike at the moment. Yeah. In a way, there's, some, there's interesting points on the bike. You know, stuff yeah. cranks. If your handlebar tape's worn behind the shifters, that sort of thing is really useful to know. Yeah. Um, but the, the key thing is the body. That's okay. the only way we're going to shape up the correct bike fit. The body assessment was really interesting and highlighted that for me, while I have no significant limitations or imbalances, there's still plenty of scope for improvement with some simple stretches. Now, any significant issues, if found, are going to need to be checked by a specialist. With that assessment out of the way, it was onto the bike and the first point of interest foot position. So Jake got me pedalling to look at my usual position before holding the cranks level to see where the pedal axle was in relation to my first and fifth metatarsal bones in the foot. Okay, so in general, the cleat position isn't wrong, as okay. I said. It's okay, good, good start. Um, but maybe we could move your foot forward a little bit, maybe it'd feel a bit different, maybe it'd feel a bit better, but there wouldn't be an indication here where it's like, oh, this is massively wrong that we need to make this adjustment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, we always check both sides um, by them se um, separately. We don't just assume on markings yeah. of shoes or where the one cleat is, the other cleat must be. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we want to look at is the, uh, is the angle of your foot. Yeah. Okay. So we've kind of got an idea already about how you stand and how you, how you look into your axe. Yeah. But what we also want to do is look at how your foot naturally sits when you're in a seated position. Okay. So I always find uh, working with uh, Wahoo Speed Play pedals, okay, is you can actually, if you back off all the float and just get someone to ride, you can kind of see where they want to put their foot naturally, mm -hmm. okay? But other brands, you can't necessarily do that so easy. Um, so, we, and you don't want to have that much float on the pedal all the time. Yeah. So what I tend to do is technique that works for me is if you hold them to the handlebars for me, yeah. 
If you unclip this right foot, okay, and just bring your leg up. That's it. Let no. it no up like that. Oh, that's yeah. it. And then just let your leg dangle over my arm. Yeah. Okay, nice and relaxed. Let it all relax over. Because then what I can see here is the angle of your foot. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes because you're closing that hip angle, we can see if it wants to turn in or turn out, but we get an idea of where your angle is going to be. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a definite, but it's definitely a, a way of a, a really solid starting point to find the angle. Okay. okay. What we can also see is if your foot wants to rotate. Okay, yeah. so your foot can have a degree of rotation, which is another question, do we need to support it with something artificial like a cleat wedge? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and sometimes if that is the case and you have that rotation, your foot won't feel like it's connecting properly through your pedal stroke and you put a lot more pressure from the outside here. We would generally, if you, you can clip yourself back in, we generally sometimes okay. have picked that up during the... Um, during like our sort of chat at the start, if we're talking about discomforts, you might find you get some pain on the outside. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes by me asking the, asking the question or the spotter it, it can trigger, oh yeah, I do feel like I'm getting a bit of pressure there. Makes so, sense. Didn't see any rotation, so you have to worry about that at all for yourself. Yeah, I think um, my, my feet are comfy when I ride the bike, yeah. which is a good point, I yeah. guess. Having, having looked at both of your feet riding, uh, you know, separate to, to what we're doing right now, I, I know your feet, your heels kind of want to come in slightly. The key, the key thing is you don't want to be hitting your cranks though. So. Yeah. Okay, one, aesthetics, no one wants to scratch their, their expensive cranks. Uh, and two, uh, we don't want your foot striking it from a, a sort of like a placement and efficiency okay. basis. So it's just about trying to dial in what we need to do. Okay. And then we'll see, comes into do we need longer axle length, crank axles. So there's a lot of there's different things. There's a lot of other things consider. around it. But All right. the basics are getting the angle right, getting the position back and forth right, which will all kind of help link towards getting the knee straight and okay. working in a straight um, sort of pedaling motion. So from the pedals and the, the cleat interface, where do we move to next? So that's when we'd move on to the rest of the fit. So looking okay. at how you interact to a saddle and how your hands connect to the handlebars. Okay. okay. Foot position checked off the list and it was on to saddle height and position next. Something which I often wonder if I have right because for years I've always sat right on the nose of the saddle. So yeah, the so next step is to, to look at that see those key areas. So, so personally, um, I use some sort of technology um, to sort of track imbalances. I never ever rely on it to do the fit because yeah. the technology doesn't know what I've already found out about you. That's interesting actually, session. yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I use it purely as a guidance around, is there a balance between left and right? And generally there's always going to be an imbalance, but mm -hmm. how do we reduce that imbalance and make you more aligned with each, with left and right? Okay. okay. So if you start to, if you want to start to ride, yeah. okay, and we'll just take a quick look at how you, uh, how you interact to the saddle currently, okay? So you like to hold the nose of the saddle yeah. quite nicely. Always uh, on the nose of the always saddle. Always on the nose yeah. of the saddle, yeah. Um, having known you for a, a couple of years, I do know that that's kind of how you have preferred to ride in yeah. the past. So sometimes this is the case where someone's ridden in a position for so long, yeah. it's kind of hard to break that muscle memory, okay? So what I'm thinking is what we could try is to we could move the saddle underneath you a little bit more. Uh -huh. Okay. Because what we want to try and do is kind of keep where our, our knee is pushing through the pedal. So we don't want to you don't want your knee to be too far back. Yeah. Because that'll put a lot of pressure through your hamstring and hip. And we also don't want to be too far forward because you can get a lot of pressure over the top of your patella. Yeah. And you can use your quads too much, which will then aid tightness, which then can bring the knee pain further down the line. What about in terms of saddle height then as well? So saddle height is, uh, at the moment, it's probably not, not looking too bad. Yeah. Okay, there's no real rocking through your pelvis. You're not overextending, you're not um, sort of pointing your toes so out. So what, yeah, like, what are some indicators and sort of rules of thumb when it comes to your saddle height? So when someone rides, when you look at how they bring their foot around the bottom of the pedal stroke, mm -hmm. sometimes people can bring their foot and they drag their foot across like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Because their knee is so extended, their toes have to be pointed down. Okay. okay, that's a common indicator that there's a bit of a, an imbalance around, um, oh sorry, not imbalance, but seat height being incorrect. Okay. So I guess if people are pointing their toes a bit, maybe that the saddle height is too high. In theory, we don't necessarily want to uh, like bring you further forward at all, um, but what I want to try and do is get you to sit on the saddle a little bit better. Okay. okay get you rotating the pelvis, it's a shorter nose saddle, so we want to rotate into that, not slide forward on, onto it. Mm. Okay. So let's give that a whirl. Like I said, it could be a degree of muscle memory, you don't want to sit there. And you might actually have to train yourself to sit in the right place. Um, but let's see, let's see how they get on with making okay. that change. What we get from you sitting in the saddle properly is a lot more stability around your pelvis here. 
okay, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in a second, but also um, still maintaining sort of pushing through the pedal in the right place so yeah. you can actually bring your glute into play a lot more. Okay. okay without also changing your reach too much. Next, we move on to the front of the bike, where recently I swapped to a narrower handlebar. So it's gonna be interesting to hear what Jake has to say about this. Sometimes someone gets on the bike and they're holding sort of like back here, that traditional sort of like- I've okay. seen that before, yeah. People yeah. Um, riding along and they're just resting their hands back from where the lever hoods are. Yeah, and sometimes that is because the reach of the bike's too long. Sometimes that's because their body doesn't allow them to reach any further. And sometimes they're just being lazy and just trying to hold further back. You know, okay. or you're not on a, a big yeah. effort, so you're just trying to relax. Um, what we want to try and do is fit you into your with your hands here, okay? Because there's no point trying to fit you back here and going, well, you can reach there eventually, yeah. Because that's never going to be, never going to be a good sort of answer. What you can actually tell sometimes when someone comes in, and you know, you can check it at home as well, is do, is your bar tape wearing around this point? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you get some significant wear marks around here, it's an indication that you potentially your reach is too long. You know, or, okay, because your hands like are just regularly further back. Exactly, and they're just sort of wearing away at the bar tape. You know, some sort of more material-based bar tapes can look a lot, a lot more. Uh, you can see that wear mark a lot bit easier. Um, but yeah, definitely something to check out. So the handlebars for me is and the stem is an interesting area because on this bike clearly it's a one-piece handlebar yeah. and stem, and this is actually a new handlebar and stem to this bike, which yeah. is what I chose. A, a while back because that's yep. what I wanted. I've only just got it fitted. So it's going to be interesting firstly to hear whether you think my guesswork is about right. Yep. And I assume it's something that you probably see regularly when people are coming to get a bike fit is that they've gone, well, I've got a really expensive handlebar yep. and now you've lost some of the adjustability and in order to change it, you've got to buy a new part which can get expensive. Yeah, and, and I mean, no one, no one really wants to... <laughs> Go and buy of like a five to say five hundred to a thousand pound cockpit. It's you know, a lot of money, very, isn't it? It's a lot of money, you know. Especially if you've just bought a bike which is a considerable amount of money as well, and you know, you saved up hard for it, or you know, you committed a lot of money to it. So then for me to say to them, Oh, you need to buy a new new handlebar for ten mil difference. Yeah. Sometimes that's kinda of hard to swallow, but it does make a big difference. So on that, also on that basis actually, because um, this was a question I wanted to ask you later on is, is when do you think would be a good time for somebody to get a bike fit? Because having just discussed that, yeah. presumably if someone was to get a bike fit done before buying their new bike, yeah. you can one, make sure you've got the right size bike, yeah. and two, potentially spec the bike with the correct handlebar and stem in the first place rather than yeah. having to retrospectively buy it. Absolutely. I think the, the best time to do a bike fit is before you've committed your money to something. Okay. You know, because not only do we find the right frame size, like you say, frame size, stem length and things, so it gives you a bit more to go to, uh, go to a retailer or somewhere and go, this is what I need, and then they can meet that demands with changing the stem mm. and bars, hopefully. Or you, um, you find a frame which is based around your body as well, okay. which is, I know I keep on banging on about it, but it is so important to match what your body can do. Because yeah. there's no point going out and buying a bike which is, super low, super long, when you need something which is actually a little bit higher, a little yeah. bit more endurance focused, a little yeah, bit more you know, makes sense. to support your body. So you actually get a bike which is comfortable for you long term, which again, you get more enjoyment. Okay, so what are the points we're trying to um, like look at? For, for example, like what, how are we gonna look to see that this is right for me? Um, the key thing is where your hand is. Okay. Okay, so if you were to sort of be trying to hold the bike and hold it there, yeah. instantly I'd be like, mm, maybe we, and we know we've got the back end right yeah. and all this sort of like engine part right. Yeah. we have like, okay, maybe we need the shorter stem. Okay, okay. just to try and get you that into place. That makes a lot of sense. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, we're a little bit off, but we haven't got the quite right, quite right saddle selection, yeah. which then reduces a little bit of rotation through your pelvis. But nine times out of 10, if you're that far back and we know we've got it right here, it's a shorter reach stem, okay? okay? Likewise, if you're in that position there and your shoulders are kind of up into your neck and you're unable to sort of get yourself out of that position, that would also indicate it's possibly a little bit too short, mm -hmm. okay? And something I see a lot is where people get like back pain or shoulder pain. They'll try and come too close and then that actually gives them more pain because it sort of closes their shoulder blades together and pinches across the top of their back and into their neck and give them headaches and numb hands and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So it's going to get that equal balance of not too far, not too close, a nice relaxed sort of like soft elbow position 
and not sort of bringing the shoulder out of its out of its socket, but equally not trying to push it so far back in that it doesn't want to come back out. So when it comes to handlebar width, is that what we're going to look at next? Yeah, before I just touch on like these the, the extreme surround, you know, yeah. how, what we can spot when handlebar width is uh, is incorrect. So a lot of people, if you look at your wrist, you can sometimes see that your wrist wants to like really roll in like okay, that. Yeah. Okay, that would possibly indicate that the the handlebar width is is too too wide. Okay. okay, significantly, and you, you probably need something a bit more in line so you can start to hold your hands into the levers a bit like you are there now. So I've got a fairly neutral position, would you say? Yeah, it kind of got this neutral position, which is almost like a nice handshake position. Oh, yeah, okay. that makes sense. So yeah. I can kind of meet you with a handshake there. Yeah. Um, but obviously, with your wrist rolled in, I couldn't probably meet you with a handshake position like that. What about okay. um, the extremes if you went really narrow? So if they're really narrow, and sometimes this is only really picked up when you're riding and if you get a little bit fatigued, mm -hmm. because holding a narrow handlebar is easier than holding a, a wider handlebar. Okay. Okay. Is sometimes the elbows can start to really want to flare out like that because okay. the arms are too too close to uh, hands are almost like too close together. And oh, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. And again, we kind of lose that sort of comfortable handshake position because yeah. we can't meet each other in that sort of that yeah. sort of position. Okay. Um, so that's sort of a couple of things you can look out for, you know, that's as well as really where you reach advice, on the lever, but how your hand and how your wrist is angled on the, yeah. on the lever. So, so far, my um, bike setup is looking like it's, it's doing all right. You, you haven't done too badly, to be fair. That's yeah. good. Imagine if it was awful and you were like, no, yeah. you've got to change all of it. Strip it. Imagine you've got the wrong, wrong size frame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so. Imagine that. And while there's no doubt in my mind that a bike fit is great for people who are racing or hardcore athletes, I'm keen to hear what other types of rider could also benefit. I, I think everyone deserves to have a bike fit, yeah. if I'm honest with you, because who's saying, you know, just because someone only rides, you know, 15 miles to work, that yeah. is technically to that person potentially a lot of riding. Yeah. You know, because it's their weekly total. So then someone who's going out and doing like Race Across America or the Pan Celtic or, you know, something like that that equally is in its own respects deserves a bike fit as well and we i tackle everyone completely different so i never assume just because someone's doing ultra distance that they're gonna have to have this sort of setup mm -hmm. or if they're commuting to work they have to have this sort of setup everyone is everyone's different i take it case by case and um again back to it basically what their body is is able to do really yeah. you know there's there's no two ways around it if the body can't handle it it's not going to do it Okay, so it. bike fits, potentially everyone is going to benefit from everyone's them. Going to benefit Not from everyone it. needs to have a bike fit. If you're only riding some really short distances, the principles that we've spoken through can yeah. perhaps help you. Yeah. But if you've got, say, an injury or you're struggling with sort of discomfort, then that's yeah. where you're really going to feel the value of coming to see an expert and get their knowledge and guidance. Yeah, exactly that. And like, to a degree, I mean, even if you are doing minimal mileage but you just want to make sure your health you're not going to get injured down the line that mm -hmm. could also be a, a factor where you think okay yeah i do actually want to come in for a bike yeah. fit. so you know that's that's what i'd recommend i'd never force anyone to come in for a bike fit i'd never assume you know everyone needs to have one or wants to have one but being on the you know first hand of it and front line of it i can see i've seen some great things and i've seen and heard people say to me i'm not riding the bike anymore unless we can get this comfortable and it's nicer than that all right. And that does keep them on their bike. So. Well, the most important aspect for me is that whilst we haven't drastically changed my setup, it does give me like peace of mind yeah. that how I'm generally using my bike and how I've got it is within the realms of like not going to cause me any injuries or yeah. damage or discomfort. So that's a real positive. And other than that, yeah, I think really helpful running through the process. I've enjoyed it. How you have as well? Yeah, no, I've loved it. Yeah, always, always happy. Um, so Jake, all that's left to say is thanks very much for helping me out. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope everyone at home has enjoyed it. If you have, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to GZN Tech to help support what we do. Jake, over to you. Watch people comment. Um, let us know what you think of Alex's position and if you've ever had a bike fit. Good suggestions. Right, get your comments down below. See you later. See ya.